When you go out to the barrens. You'd see a nice open environment that's conducive to wildlife, such as turkeys. We call these glacial deposits of land uh, that are growing so many blueberries a blueberry barren. And that name does describe the place. It looks pretty barren. It almost looks like you're in a dry desert, um, but you're here in Maine. If we go uh, in the spring, it can be fully white with flowers. And you'll hear the bees just buzzing around. If we go in the fall, it can be bright red with uh, leaves. Go in August, it can be completely blue. So, you know, looking at it uh, over time and, and the differences in the fields, it's rural and quiet and just a really very nice place to be. They were small. Range, so. I, I'm yeah, hoping yeah, they're, they're looking small. better, but they were looking, but were really small. just loaded, Dave. The pollination, again, was That's just good. incredible. Yeah. Well, if we didn't have that university research and uh, that information to allow them to adapt and improve the productivity, they'd be out of business. There would be no blueberry growers. You know, when we started, we didn't know anything about blueberries, and it was a real learning curve. Everything we did was a learning curve, and... You know, we're just really lucky that there's people like Dave, if I, like I said, if I have a question, you know, I just got to know him more and more from the ICM and the meetings, but then, then he started coming out to get fresh packed blueberries and we just got to know each other better, I guess. No other university um, in the United States is doing wild blueberry research other than here in Orono. Um, so that's a wonderful tradition that we want to continue to build upon. And they're just so pretty. People stop all the time and take pictures there. And I tell, uh, his niece lives down next to the road, and I tell her husband, I said, why don't you take a chair and we'll sit there and have a sign, five dollars a picture. <laughs> These growers are so, they love farming. They just love to be outside. They love to manage a crop. And it is a dynamic group of people. Uh, it goes back 150 years for commercial, production of wild blueberries and of course a long history of Native American use and stewardship of the berry before that. Oh, I just enjoy being out there. I worked in an office for years and years and years and it's just so nice to get out there and I just love to see <clears throat> how the fields have improved. There's a lot of good memories to it but there's oh, yeah. a lot of... I think you'll to never myself, forget the hard work that yeah, went into yeah. it. I think to myself lots of times, I wonder what my father would think if he could see the fields and the shape <laughs> they're in now. Since I've only been here two years and they've both been bad, and they always say, like, just rain makes so much of a difference, you know, like one inch of rain can make little berries turn into, like, huge berries. It's just that random, you know. You get a good year, you get a bad year, I guess, so I'm just waiting for a good year because even these bad years have been good for me because I've gotten 200 boxes. I've been coming here since 1986. I enjoy it and I love it. And if I didn't like it, I wouldn't, I wouldn't come back. I have arthritis in my hands and it keeps my hands going. Just love it. <laughs> she knew how to, the very first year, she just figured out the picking and I've never had a picker. That, and part of it is she picks with two hands. Most people go like this, but she, and I do pick with two yeah. hands too, but. Um, That's how I started and it's what I've been doing. And see, there's some more of that. It looks like you're getting a pretty good kill on this. See that? Look look at this. See? Yep. There's some more of that. I'm anxious to I see what that right is. Really worldwide, weeds are the biggest problem for growing crops. Now I see some red sorrel right in that bare spot right there. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So you don't have to get that. Because they compete with the plants, uh, they adulterate the crops, they make it uh, more difficult to harvest, to reduce yields. You can use uh, in the fall too with the woody weeds, if you have maples or birch, uh, woody weeds, this is a very good uh, way to, uh, to control them. We look at the whole farm and develop a whole farm IPM program that involves 
cultural management. So are there ways that we can manage the plant to reduce a certain insect pest or um, are there mechanical ways that we can start weeding a little bit differently to reduce the use of herbicides? Everybody should harvest blueberry leaves and at least have some dried in a jar in their kitchen to make a tea in the winter time. Product diversification into more value-added markets is one way to add value to a farm. Here we have our uh, blueberry teas. So we wanted to be the first to put out a real pure blueberry tea that it was made with just the fruit and the leaves. Remember, we're just blueberry farmers. We've never been in the tea world, so we didn't know what to expect. And could you really make a living off making blueberry tea? And you can. It's been frustrating because we had a really good crop out there and if we had gotten a couple inches of rain in July, we probably, we're basically going to end up with about 130,000 pounds, but we would have probably had 250,000 pounds if we'd gotten the rain and that's just, that's just the nature of blueberries, they need water. everybody's nervous about what the future is going to bring because it was so promising five ten years ago I mean the wild blueberry industry seemed to be heading in the right direction and then for a whole bunch of reasons you know we just lost our price and now people are dropping out like flies We're talking about this little plant that is like this tall and <laughs> it's growing this delicious little berry and if we can come together around this marvel of biology that would be really cool and I think that's what farmers do. What we're doing as small farmers is not only are we creating a lifestyle um, we're creating a product that is beneficial for those who are going to consume it. I enjoy it. I, I will miss it. I'm 84 years old, so I mean it's, uh, it's not going to be much longer. I can go down there and work yeah. all day. Yeah. But I've been out there and just roam around all day and never come back for lunch. On the rhizome, new buds are formed and new shoots come out. We're able to, to keep this resource, which really has taken a very long time to uh, establish and become productive and maintain that. Uh, so I, I guess the biggest, uh, the biggest uh, contribution is to allow them to be blueberry growers and uh, not sell the land off for house lots. <laughs>